Bric-a-Brac. Written by Bridie Banwell and read by Claudette Evans. While browsing the Bric-a-Brac stall at the Fete, I distinctly heard a voice whispering my name. Turning around, it was surprised to find no one else close by, apart from the young girl in front of a table full of bits and pieces. She was busy swiping quickly through the various messages on her phone. All of her attention was focused on the device in her hand. As if transported to an imaginary world where... Nothing mattered but the screen she was glued to. I quickly glanced at the table full of objects and briefly wondered if there was some sort of device which could be used as a microphone or speaker of some sort. After a couple of minutes spent staring intently until my eyes blurred, I had a sudden craving for a long, cool drink. The refreshments tent was filled with the aroma of freshly ground coffee, tea, and a range of baked cakes. My nostrils were filled with the wonderful smells. There was also a selection of sandwiches on offer and several types of bread. I ordered a scone filled with cream and jam plus a glass of orange juice. When served, I carried my tray to an outside table and sat down. It was then I realised just how tired I was, and certainly grateful for a rest. The orange juice was ice cold and tasted sweet, quenching my thirst after the first gulp, and setting my taste buds alight. I took a nibble of the scone, and the combination of dough, cream and jam were absolutely yummy. Stomach full and thirst quenched with orange juice and the freshly baked scone, my mind was allowed to wander. It was time to indulge in one of my favourite pastimes, that of people watching. I never tire of observing the facial expressions of individuals as they pass by. Often I tried to guess what they might be thinking about. Stories formed in my mind of the characters seen briefly as they wandered along. Sometimes the tail end of a conversation might just be clearly heard, the words meaningless. What might their own story entail? Where were they going and why? Sometimes I retrieved my notebook and pen, scribbling ideas to be put to good use later. The sun shone in all its glory. Hardly a breeze ruffled the petals of the beautiful blooms on the flower stall, vibrant colours catching the eye. I was filled with awe at the sight of such beauty. There were roses and jasmine emitting the most pungent and wonderful natural perfumes. The heat of the day was rising and I was thankful for the vibrantly striped awning above the table, giving much-needed shade and protection as the rays of the sun shone from a cloudless sky. I decided to head back to the tent containing the bric bac stall, just in case the voice might be heard again. Almost as soon as I stepped through the opening and reached the table, my name was whispered again and again like a mantra. I began to pick up objects from the table, searching underneath and behind china statuettes, metallic bells, glassware and a range of knick-knacks. Each item of differing materials, some cool to the touch, others slightly warmer, depending on the element they were made of. I kept up the search until my eyes caught a glint of green sparkling in the sunlight, which had pierced the gap in the tent flap, allowing it to shine through. The glass case contains a selection of jewellery, brooches, earrings, necklaces, rings and some beautiful velvet chokers. The glinting emerald green stone edged in gold filigree was attached to a black velvet choker, 
I had to have it. This was the object which was whispering my name, until I asked the young girl if she could take it out of the case for me and tell me the price of it. I knew the price was irrelevant. The choker was handed over in a flower-patterned paper bag. The whispering stopped as soon as it was placed in my hands. Outside in the sunlight, I walked to a folding chair, of which there were several placed in front of a platform, where the vegetables and flowers were to be judged later in the afternoon. I eagerly opened the paper bag and took out the choker. The velvet was smooth and luxurious to the touch. The glinting emerald shone so bright it was almost blinding as the sunlight shone from above. I held it in the palm of my hand and suddenly an image of a beautifully dressed lady in a blue silk gown flashed inside my mind. Instinctively, I knew she had been the former owner of this piece of jewellery. I placed the choker inside the paper bag and pushed it deep inside my handbag. I decided to go straight home. There was more than one story to write about this beautiful object, and I knew the blue silk-gowned lady was eager to tell me hers. <laughs>